The show Breaking Bad is a beautiful 2008 American drama series that is full of entertaining, thrilling, and dramatic moments that will surely capture and captivate the audience's attention all throughout the episodes, as well as memorable characters that immerses the watcher to the world that the show managed to create despite its depressing premise. Aside from the show's accurate portrayal of a very sensitive topic, the show also emphasizes the very human struggle of choosing between what is right and what is necessary for survival, which is evident in the main character's struggle to keep his family financially secured despite dealing with his own mortality. It is also referred to as one of the greatest television series of all time, consistently garnering multiple awards such as Emmy and Peabody Award until its final episode. As such, even if the show has already concluded back in 2013, there are still many people who watch and revisit it on a timely basis, which is a testament to its overall popularity and historical status as one of the best shows in recent memory, thereby cementing its important place in pop culture. With that being said, today I will share with you the first season of Breaking Bad. Let us see how this beautiful story will unfold. Walter White, a former chemist, is currently a high school chemistry teacher in a small town. Even though he tries to be enthusiastic about teaching, his students do not care about the subject that much. Aside from this, his job as a teacher is not sufficient to support his pregnant wife, Skylar, and disabled son, Walter Jr. So to make ends meet, he also works in a car washing business, a job that he absolutely hates due to always being switched to car cleaning duty rather than just working as a cashier. On one occasion, some of Walter's rich students see him cleaning their expensive car, prompting them to take pictures of Walter's embarrassing situation as well as tell their friends about it. Even on his 50th birthday, nothing remarkable happens to him except for the surprise party to celebrate his birthday. At the party, his obnoxious brother-in-law, Hank, who is a DEA agent, makes Walter hold his gun and mocks him for holding it like he is terrified. Hank then makes all the guests watch the latest news about his operation, shifting everyone's focus toward his achievements instead of Walter's birthday. There on a television screen, Walter sees the huge lump of money from the operations. Since he is working at two low-paying jobs, this detail caught his eyes the most. Seeing Walter's interest in the news, Hank offers Walter to come along with him and his partners on one of their operations. That night, Skyler tries to pleasure Walter but he is so depressed to even be aroused. One day, while working at the car wash, a constantly coughing Walter suddenly collapses due to exhaustion. Upon waking up, he finds himself in an ambulance on the way to the hospital. Not wanting to pay the fee for medications, Walter attempts to persuade the doctor beside him to just drop him nearby and that his collapse is just from fatigue. The doctor inside checks on his lungs and quickly asks if he is a smoker, and Walter responds that he never smoked in his life. It turns out that Walter's constant coughing is actually a symptom of lung cancer. This comes as a huge shock to Walter who quickly gets disillusioned with his life, causing him to just stare into nowhere from time to time. Not wanting to make his wife worried, Walter does not tell Skylar that he has a fatal disease. However, Skylar notices that her husband seems much quieter than usual, so she knows that something is bugging him. Even her sister, Marie, notices that there is something wrong with Walter. However, Skyler thinks that Walter is just sad about reaching the significant milestone of 50 years. Due to this life-changing news, Walter immediately quits his work at the car wash after the boss swaps him again to washing duty, although he still maintains his teaching job at the high school. Walter is so down in the dumps that he decides to call Hank so that he can come along and observe one of the operations even though he is irritated at Hank. Hank agrees with this and takes him along. Hank and his partner talk about an infamous dealer in the area named Captain Cooks. They also make a bet about his nationality, thinking that he is Mexican. After waiting for a while, the DEA raids the house where Captain Cooks is said to reside. There, they arrest a man named Emilio whom they thought to be Captain Cooks. Walter asks to see the laboratory but Hank and his partner tell him to stay put first while they secure the area. However, while Hank and others are busy doing this, Walter suddenly sees his former student named Jess Pinkman. He sees Jesse fleeing from another house after making love with a woman there. Walter learns that he is Captain Cooks because it is written in Jess's plate number as he is escaping. Since Walter is the only one who saw him and he is interested in the business due to needing money, he heads to Jess's house to talk with him. Of course, Jesse is understandably confused and cautious by Walter's sudden arrival at his house, but he gets even more surprised when Walter offers to cook together. Since Walter is a chemist, he promises that he can make an even better batch of good quality crystals. Jesse finds this suggestion to be funny, but Walter is serious. Walter adds that they will either do this or Jesse will be surrendered to the authorities, so Jesse has no choice but to accept his offer. 
True to his words, Walter immediately goes to the storage room of the high school to gather the various test tubes and vials needed to make crystals. He then quickly takes these things back to Jess's place. Despite seeing Walter's various professional tools, Jesse refuses to make crystals at his house because it is his resting place. Because of this, Jesse suggests to him that they can perhaps buy a mobile laboratory instead so that they can be on the move while making crystals. Walter agrees with this and immediately withdraws all of his money to buy an RV. It is at this point that Jesse asks him why he suddenly gets interested in the dangerous business. Walter refuses to tell him that he has cancer so he instead tells him that he has simply become awakened. Later on, Walter heads to a clothing store to assist his son in picking up new clothes for him. While Walter Jr. is checking his pants in the mirror, some bullies are mocking him for being a cripple who needs assistance from his parents. When Skylar is about to confront them, Walter stops her and goes to the back of the store. It turns out that he has just gone around to the front of the store wherein he directly attacks one of his son's bullies. Walter does this by stepping on his leg and then telling him to hit him in the face. Instead of doing this, the bullies retreat and both Walter Jr. and Skylar are impressed by Walter's bravery. The following day, Walter and Jesse proceed to work at the mobile laboratory, which they drive on the outskirts of the city. Walter removes his clothes first before cooking because he does not want his clothes to be tarnished, and Jesse cannot believe this because this is his first time seeing such professionalism. Due to his skill as a chemist, Walter manages to create a batch of good quality crystals, which look like beautiful and transparent fragments of glass. This impresses Jesse because he views the cooking process as art. Jesse wants to try it, but Walter tells him not to do it because they are only selling your products. And so, Jesse takes some samples and brings them to a man named Crazy, who instantly knows that Jesse did not make them because he is bad at producing crystals. Also, Emilio is Crazy's cousin, so he does not appreciate Jesse for leaving his cousin behind to be caught. It turns out that Emilio is already out of jail for paying the bail. As such, the two of them threaten Jesse to take them to Walter. Fearing for his life, Jesse has no choice but to point them to the mobile laboratory. There, at first, Crazy just intends to make a deal with Walter to work with him in exchange for money, but Emilio immediately recognizes Walter as being with Hank during the raid. Crazy points his gun at him and threatens to shoot him. Jesse attempts to escape but he trips instead and falls face first on the rock, making him unconscious. Emilio then ties his hands up. Walter attempts to persuade Crazy that he can share his recipe with him if he wants. Crazy accepts, so they all head inside the RV except Jesse. Before he can start, Walter asks Emilio to throw out the cigarette due to its smoke. Emilio complies and throws it out while it is still alight, thereby burning some dry bushes outside. While making a batch, Walter secretly creates a chemical reaction that turns what he is cooking into mustard gas. He quickly runs outside the mobile laboratory and locks both Crazy and Emilio inside, suffocating them. Afterward, he notices the burning bushes beside the RV. Panicking at this point, Walter takes the unconscious Jess back to the vehicle and attempts to drive away from the place. Due to his manic driving, Walter crashes the car into a ditch beside the road. He then hears siren sounds coming toward the RV. Seeing this as his futile last stand, Walter uses Jess's camcorder to record his supposed final messages to his loving wife and son. Afterward, he points a pistol toward the road where the siren can be heard. Frustrated with his life, Walter tries to shoot himself with the gun safety pin is fortunately still intact. However, the siren turns out to have come from firefighters instead, rather than the DEA or policemen. Because of this, the surprised Walter hides his weapon and lets them pass by. Jesse finally wakes up and asks him what happened but Walter is too stunned to speak. When Jesse asks him about what he did to Crazy and Emilio, Walter explains scientifically about mustard gas. He then goes back to the RV to retrieve Crazy's money and washes them in the washing machine. After cleaning the money, Walter and Jesse call a nearby driver of a bulldozer to help them take out their vehicle using the bulldozer. Although the driver does not care about their circumstance, the two still attempt to make an excuse as to why they ended up in the ditch. They then give the driver the wet money. When the driver finally leaves, Walter and Jess immediately check the lifeless bodies inside the RV. Walter tells Jesse that they need to get rid of the bodies quickly in Jess's place. At first, Jesse does not want to do it but Walter promises that their paths will never cross again after discarding the bodies. Jesse then accepts the deal. Unknown to them, they forget a gas mask outside as they are leaving the area. Worse still, before they leave, they discover that one of the bodies, Crazy, is actually still alive but barely breathing. That night, a tired Walter goes back home much later than usual. Skylar tries to confront him about his recent behavior, but Walter kisses her instead before they share a passionate night together. 
After making love with his wife, Walter silently heads to the bathroom and falls asleep on the floor. The following day, Skyler wakes Walter up by calling him from the other side of the door. During breakfast, Skyler is noticeably suspicious of Walter's odd behavior, which Walter tries to dispel by telling a joke. He then receives a call from Jesse who imitates the voice and speech pattern of technical support to disguise his call. Walter quickly picks the phone up and tells Jesse that he will go to his house after school. When Walter drops the call and leaves for school, the suspicious Skylar calls back Jess's number and receives a vulgar voicemail, rousing her suspicions even further. As such, she searches for a number tracker in her laptop and inserts Jess's number there. The results indicate Jess's house address and social media account, which shows that he is a dealer. Meanwhile, Walter continues to teach at the school, although he is noticeably fidgety due to thinking about dealing with crazy. He even mishears one of his students saying the word murder instead of midterm. After teaching, he takes some hydrofluoric acid from the school storage room and heads back to Jess's residence. As this happens, Crazy manages to escape from the mobile laboratory and quickly walks to the streets of the subdivision. Walter is shocked to see the struggling Crazy walking outside in broad daylight. He attempts to play it cool by trying to talk to Crazy, but Crazy gets terrified instead and runs toward a tree, knocking him down cold. Having no choice, Walter immediately transfers Crazy's unconscious body to the trunk of his car and drives back to Jess's house. There, Walter and Jesse quickly take Crazy's body to the basement where they can hear him breathe heavily. Afterward, Walter criticizes Jesse for his negligence because it might lead to their arrests. While they are arguing against each other, they hear a sound in the basement, prompting them to check it out immediately. Although Crazy is still lying on the ground, the two tie his neck to a pole using a metallic lock from a motorcycle. Right after handling this problem, the two argue once again. Both of them have no history of killing another person or even disposing of a dead body, so the two choices are difficult for them. So they flip a coin to see who will eliminate Crazy. Unfortunately, Walter gets this assignment while Jesse will dispose of Emilio's body by dissolving his body in acid. Afterward, Jesse goes to the supermarket to buy a plastic container that will not dissolve in hydrofluoric acid. This particular acid can break through rocks, concrete, metal, and ceramics, so it requires a specific kind of plastic, although Jesse does not know this detail. He thinks he is just simply finding a container for the body. Jesse tests the plastic containers there if they can fit an adult body, but they seem to be too small. Meanwhile, Walter is deeply contemplating the killing that he will commit, so he tries to find a main weapon, such as a knife, a hammer, and a gun. But he settles with a simple yet effective plastic bag to suffocate Crazy. As he heads down the basement, the unconscious Crazy suddenly goes back to life and asks who is there. His vision is slightly impaired and his voice is still a bit hoarse. Walter becomes terrified and decides to go back upstairs, but Crazy pleads for water. Incapable of killing the man, Walter accepts Crazy's request for water. He even gives him food, a bucket to relieve himself, and some tissue paper and soap. While eating the sandwich, Crazy asks Walter about his cousin Emilio, but Walter does not answer him. As he goes back upstairs, Walter sees some grass in the kitchen which belongs to Jesse. Inexperienced, he has multiple attempts of rolling it into a cigarette until finally getting it right. He then smokes it to alleviate the tension and stress that he feels regarding his current situation. A while later, Jesse comes back home and sees Walter smoking his supply of grass. He then tells Walter that he did not buy any plastic containers because none of them can hold an adult-sized body. At first, Jesse sympathizes with Walter for the horrible yet necessary deed of killing Crazy. However, he hears Crazy's coughing, confirming that he is still alive. Walter tells him that he will do it tomorrow and that he has an important thing to attend to. Afterward, Walter heads to the hospital to be with Skylar as they check the condition of her pregnancy. The baby inside Skylar is alright and it's a girl. Initially, Walter is happy about this but his emotions suddenly shift when he realizes that he will not live long to see his daughter grow up due to his cancer. Here, after the doctor checks on them, Skylar confronts Walter about Jesse whom she tracked earlier. Walter has no choice but to lie to her by saying that Jesse sells him grass, which is not a big deal compared to crystals. Still, Skylar reprimands him for buying this because his brother-in-law, Hank, is a DEA agent and might arrest him someday. Later on, while Walter is in his class conducting a midterm examination, Jesse has finally decided to dissolve Emilio's lifeless body, thinking to himself that it is just meat at this point. As he does this, Skylar suddenly visits his residence and almost catches Jesse in the act of transferring a body. There, Skylar warns Jesse not to sell grass to her husband anymore because her brother-in-law is a DEA agent. 
She then leaves the house just as quickly, and Jesse continues transporting the body to his bathroom upstairs. He figures that he can use the bathtub there since it can hold an adult body. However, he does not know that it is not a suitable container for hydrofluoric acid. Afterward, Walter soon arrives at Jess's house. Jesse immediately confronts him about his brother-in-law working in the DEA, which poses a very dangerous problem for the both of them, telling him that Skylar had just been recently here. Also, Jesse criticizes Walter for not doing his task while he has already followed through with dissolving Emilio in the bathtub. Hearing that Jesse wrongfully used the bathtub as a container for the acid, Walter quickly goes upstairs to check what happened, and he sees blood dripping from the ceiling. Sure enough, the hydrofluoric acid now mixed with blood melts through the ceramic bathtub and into the floor. All of a sudden, what remains of Emilio falls from the ceiling, leaving a huge bloody mess everywhere. Here, the annoyed Walter calmly explains to Jesse that hydrofluoric acid dissolves rocks, metal, and ceramic, which is why he specifically wants a plastic container with a specific component. Meanwhile, some kids playing outside go to the ditch where Walter and Jesse crashed before. One of the kids sees the gas mask that they left behind and wears it. 